What if I told you you didn't have to list every single day to be a successful eBay seller? Over the past seven days, I've been experimenting by focusing only on improving and removing my existing listings. If it's a cheap $10 or less item, I've been deleting it. If it's worth over $15, I've been slightly reducing the price to hopefully get a sale. At no point over the last seven days have I bothered to hit a listing goal and I've been shocked to see the store sales results. In this video, I'm gonna take you through what those sales results were. I'm also gonna take you into the flea market. We're gonna be picking up high quality items that are going to sell in a pretty quick space of time on eBay. And then I'm gonna bring you back and show you the 28 sales that came through over the weekend period. I've got a funny feeling this is gonna be another long video. So hopefully you're ready for it. Let's get into it. So if we have a quick look at the sales numbers over the last couple of days, I'm really more curious about the last week. Um, the last week, we've only listed 24 listings. Now, typically, we would always do 105. Um, so 24, you know, we're talking about a quarter of our workload, which is a huge drop-off. And it didn't sit well with me all week. But the sales that we got last week, we got $2,765-odd, dollars, which is exactly what we average over the course of the year. So even though there was a significant drop-off in active listings, we were still able to see the exact same sales results come in. And I think a lot of the time, certainly for me as well as a seller, is I've always thought that to get good sales, you need to list every single day. Um, but last week was proof in the pudding that you actually don't. Now, we weren't lazy though last week, were we? No. I think our, I think our output on eBay as a platform was still the same, if not even more. Yeah. Because we were manipulating a lot of listings. We were deleting a lot of listings. We were tinkering with titles and things like that. And I think that workload made up for the fact that, that we weren't listing up new listings. Yeah. So I'm going to continue to track it. Uh, 2,765 last week for 24 listings. Might only do 24 listings again this week. Um, we, we have no listing goal and we have no sourcing goal. We basically don't care about new stuff. We're only focusing for the next three weeks on fixing up what we've currently got. Um, so no purchasing, which is really quite strange and no listing as well, doesn't sit well with me. Um, but the sales are still there. Yesterday we did $433 as an yeah. example. Um, now for the month, we're sitting on $4,106, but we want to do $10,000 for the month. And being 10 days in, it's gonna be really touch and go basically. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm super confident about hitting $10,000, but based on where we're at now, but we're going to have a really good dig at it because we're going to continue to work on the store and drop prices and that might generate a few more sales. So you never know. We might hit that 10,000 goal to end the year. But that's the big thing that I wanted to highlight. You don't need to be listing every single day, but you do need to be working on your store every day in some way or another to get those consistent sales coming in. And I, look, I think once this little experiment ends, there's going to be two main sourcing locations for us in 2024. We're going to be focusing on the flea market and private pick opportunities. Um, I, we always find our best items when we're out at the flea. Uh, the flea market videos that we've got on this channel have always kind of, in my opinion, trumped the, the thrift store videos. Um, the thrifting, unfortunately, this year has just been really difficult with regards to the price points, really tight margins, having to say no to items that I would otherwise want to purchase just because their price points are so high, let alone all of the commuting. You know, we went out and did a trip to the thrift in one of the recent videos, 13 thrift stores for 13 items. Like, it's just not feasible. It's not efficient. Um, the margins are, are tighter. Um, so I've really got to pull myself back from going out there. Um, but we will be going to the flea every single Sunday and I'm going to try and up the volume that I purchase on a Sunday in 2024. Um, it, it's just such a great hunting ground with so many cool items and uh, the private pick opportunities through the use of this YouTube channel uh, are going to pull out the connections that I've got to be able to source really great items that I already sell, the categories that I like to sell. Um, so that'll be the focus. Um, as an example, I'm going to take you into the flea right now, um, which was a whole lot of fun on Sunday, a couple of days ago. Uh, and then I'm going to bring you back home after we've uh, shown you what I ended up picking up there. And I'm going to take you through what was 28 sales uh, that came through over the weekend period uh, that Courtney and I are shipping out for the Monday post. So... Look, don't get me wrong, things are rolling along really, really well right now. It's just the learnings that we're picking up along the way that I'm trying to share with you guys as we go. But uh, yeah, we'll see you in the flea. Always the most important moment of the flea is the first hour. And you and I oh, are in the middle of it. Hi, um, would you do 40 on the boots? 40 on the boots? I'll do 40 on the boots. Yep. All right, let's do that. Um, and would you go 10 on them by any chance? 
I think you got 15 on them. All right, I'll do 10 on them. Yep, so 50? Yep. All right, let's do Beautiful. it. Beautiful. Lovely. Good man. Thank you. One little tip that I've got for you guys that I think is actually pretty crucial when you're in places like flea markets or even garage sales doing your picking. Those um, Doc Martens as an example, I said boots. I said, how much for the boots? I didn't say how much for your $100 Doc Martens that you've got, I wanna get them for a cheap price. I just said boots. And keep it to generic terms um, to try and not highlight the fact that they might be something good. Um, you can do that across the board with any category. Just say what it is in its most basic sense. Um, and that way people won't clue on to the fact that they might have a better item than they think they do. You also want to really try and remain calm as well when you're in negotiation. So you want to take your time. Pauses I think are really crucial as well. If you pause, it gets them sweating. Even though you might be ready to go ahead and make the purchase, the pause might get them to speak up again. They might lower their price. So I always do that. I might try and show it in the next couple of negotiations that I do. Um, a lot of pausing, a lot of thinking, a lot of fake thinking. Um, and then you can potentially strike a better price. Can't complain with $2 each, hey? She can. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for the $5. support. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's what you like to hear down at the flea, is $2. Mm. How much on the sandals? Those ones. Yeah. The Birkenstocks. Yeah. Um, I think she's got, how much on your Birks? Five? Five. Five, yeah. okay. Um, so 10 dollars for brand new. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll put it in the backpack. Oh, you're right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks you're so much. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good one. You too. It's an awesome case. Yeah. I don't know if they go well or not. Yeah. Bunch of games, any good ones? Mm, 10 bucks. Yeah. It's a PS3 as well. Yeah, that's like probably 10, 15 bucks. Are you going to grab that? No. No? No. Bunch of hats here too, mate. I left the corduroy um, yeah, three, the baby on top for you. <laughs> haven't you haven't you worn that one yourself? No, I, I almost did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mum. Oh, that's cool. Kimmy oh. Wright and. You got a price on that one? Mm. Hey, Mum. How much for the PlayStation thing? Oh, I had five on that. Five on that? Three, yeah. Hats are three. Would you do five for the two? Yeah? Just spied the Jordans, my man. 60. <laughs> so are they? Eight. eBay comes from the last sold. Okay. I've taken a bit off, but if they're all the heat, all of them are brand new. Oh, are they? Oh, they're sealed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Sorry, if you want to, I can have a bit of a deal for you. Yeah, sick, man. Grand Theft Auto 5 sealed. What a collection. Radiant Venusaur, PSA 10. Wow. Very cool. Mewtwo, that's awesome. $100. Cool cards, man. These would be all right on eBay pricing, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Appreciate it. They're just personal, so. They're your personals? Okay, I hear. That's nice, Pikachu. Look at that. Oh, it's wild, eh? PSA 10 too. And it's 10. Wow. Isn't it ever? 
This is some good stuff, eh? Oh, he's got great cards. Yeah, bro. All video games, shoes. It's the best of the bunch, this booth. Yeah, this is a good booth, yeah. Yeah. Sure. And if there's nothing with tags, they're just too easy. Two bucks on those. Yeah, okay. Sort of five. Ten dollars for a box of DVDs here. Ten bucks for the whole box. Yeah, I am trying to call. Yeah, Courtney, if Courtney was here, she'd be telling me to run away. She's been ruthless. Yeah. But I'll tell you, she she needs to be because that's what we need to do. Yeah, exactly. She's putting me into line, which is great. Yeah, it's high end only. I just get suckered in when I come down and I see this sort of thing, you know? Shouldn't you get like $10 or something and you don't make much bloody profit? I know, I know. We're going to get better at, at saying no. Yeah, that's the hard part. That's it the is. bit I'm finding hard. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. What are you seeing, Matty? I am hunting for G-O-L-D. No, I'm not finding any. <laughs> not finding any? You're digging in the right little box, though. you got a couple of boxes over there to look through. Aren't working the best. It's a patience game, isn't it? You see, see that in there? Yeah. It says 925, it means it's gold plated silver. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Nine, 925. See how it says made in Italy and then it's got a little 925 there? Yes. So that means it's. Gold made in Italy silver. is a good sign, but gold plated silver is not a good sign. You don't want that. No, it's you want good. actual gold. Yeah. And this is where you find it, like just looking in a box like this. Yeah. Something like this, even though that's hollow, yeah. it'd be like $150 to $200 worth of gold if it was gold. Really? Yeah. I said $5. Wow. But, yeah. And that's all through the codes on the back of it? Yeah, all these little codes. Yeah. You've got to have good eyesight or glasses. <laughs> right. But like if you find, this is how I've been finding gold. I think I found like. I bought something for $5 last week. Yeah. I sold it for $170. Wow. Yeah. Just because it was solid gold. It's instant. That's incredible. Nothing there. Have to find. Well, yeah. we keep digging. We keep digging. How much on the, um, the book bundles? $15 each. They're good books, aren't they? Oh, there's a pound price on there, is there? What's this here? Oh, photo frame. That's awesome. Would you do 20 for the two? 25. I'll have a think about it. I hear you. Yep. No, no worries. I will have a think, but thank you, though. That's awesome. Where were you last week? Oh, mate, I, was, I wasn't here, was I? No, I missed. And now I'm jumping back into it. I brought all my collection of um, games and Did a farm. You? I was hoping you were there to get oh, it. Oh, so. no. But, um, you don't have it today? No, no. Um, one of your rivals picked him up. Oh, did he? Good Didn't on him. He? No, that's, uh, that's, uh, what that's what you've got to What's his name? Pastime something or another? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and he... Uh, he came in and he swooped, eh? Hey? Yeah, he did. Well, that's my bad luck, isn't yeah. it? I should have been there. Uh, I might be uh, in the, I've got like a thousand DVDs and sets nice. and all that. I'll bring him in the future. Bring all him right? in, my man. Thank you very much. Good to see you. <laughs> Everybody's got two masks, probably. Yeah, yeah, you have to. How much is your bulldog shirt? Uh, we've got 10 each on them, man, like fairly older ones. Yeah. I picked up a heap of them wrong ones. Um, the Mip Switch on that carrot trail there about three weeks oh, ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just kept, kept yeah, quite I a... Yeah, I know someone that I kept it. Yeah. That was a single stitch Canterbury Bulldog shirt for 10 bucks as well, which would have been a very, very good purchase, but as you saw, those guys uh, swooped in and picked it up straight away. You gotta be quick out here, and good stuff goes fast.
Just saw some Thomas the Tank Engine figures, and I'm always actually looking at weird action figures now. Um, little figurines, they can often comp up to be pretty good if they're uh, vintage. And I was looking on the back of all of those uh, Thomas the Tank Engine uh, figures just to see, and there was actually a bit of a mix of years. I think some of them could be worth a little bit of money, but in the end, I just you know left them behind. But it's always good to put a bit of time into new categories, things you're not sure on, just have a bit of a look into researching new stuff. Like I probably need to do that a little bit more. Oh. Don't know if they're any good, a paid dollar each. Golden Eye? That's got to be worth a bit. I thought so. It's like a good game on N64. I think that might be alright. Capcom, yeah, I think that does I go well. I just checked that. That's like 30. That's new, isn't it? Yeah. Brand oh, new. yeah. Well done. And you got your um, camera. And that one's good. Um, I don't know if it's working, but the lens is 150 to 200. 150 to 200, nice. And then I'll probably get about 50 for parts if I can't get it going. Okay. But if I can, I think it's like 450 for the whole thing. Oh, wow. I can't believe you sold that other one. Yeah. For what, 500? 500, yeah. Wow. In the, uh, four days, I think. That's crazy. Yeah. What's that? And then they just threw that in. I haven't checked it. What it's is like it? It's like a Polaroid eye zone. It's probably worth that 20 bucks. But... Okay. But they just tossed it in? Yeah. That's good. But yeah. That's really good. Not bad. Are you filming? Uh, a little bit here and there, but yeah. Nice. Film as much as you can. Yeah. What do you got here, Jamie? Just a set reader. A wooden... Holy shit, that's heavier than I put a little bit. Sony cassette eraser. <laughs> but I reckon tell, YouTube might that. be my friend, friend on this one. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube will definitely be a friend. There we go, that opens it and shove it in the cassette in there. And... I swear we used to just start recording on. Remember the tape over tape? I don't remember, I don't remember these. Young fella. <laughs> Jamie certainly wouldn't remember those. <laughs> I'm sure, a lot of people my age wouldn't even know what it is. Nah. Exactly. <laughs> and here you are trying to flip it. Um, the rubber one is 25. Oh, 20. That one? Yep. Are you going to do it for 30? Yeah, I've got a, um, I've got a guy that's a collector and he's giving me toys to sell that. You should see my collection at home, man. Oh, I can imagine. Oh, I've got to stop it, man. Right. Can imagine. <laughs> is it? Massive. Big Simpsons collection. Yeah. yeah, I can see why. You're after it? Yeah, bro, we're good. Put it in the car. Oh, literally, be like five seconds. Just do it. You wouldn't believe it, guys, but I've been able to strike on these for $20. So, brand new and sealed. I think we should be able to get them for maybe 70 or 80 bucks. So I'm pretty happy with that. If they were pre-owned, I probably would have said no. Uh, but as I was just walking through, um, she called me out and she said, hey, I heard you asked for 20 bucks last time around. Let's do it. So what I was saying before, just, just being patient can pay off. Are we rolling? Mm -hmm. Can't really see you though. Oh, well, let's get into some light. Uh, all right, now, we're going to be, that's not bouncing around either, is it, that microphone? Mm. No. Okay. So we're going to be going through 10 of our best sold sales over the weekend. And we're going to kick it off with just a collection of hats that have sold. We sold four hats, Courtney, mm. uh, over the weekend. A good little mix here that I thought I'd show you guys. First one is a Philadelphia Eagles. I'm actually really happy to see this sell. The reason why is because it's a fitted hat. Mm. And I actually don't like sourcing fitted hats because you need that size head. Just makes it a lot harder. It was in the America one. It was. Yeah, it was. So that's why I'm happy to just see it go. I'll have to put the comps up on screen for it. I've just grabbed the full collection here because four hats over a weekend of sales is actually quite a high number for us. We don't normally get as many as four. Um, now, I found this and spoke about this in a recent video. This is the Cooper's Brewing hat, which is actually the second alcohol-related hat there with the Jim Beam. Um, so the Jim Beam hat plus this one, I think both for, went for around 20 to $25 each. So it's definitely, I'm not saying it's like pick up every single beer hat that you find, but definitely pay attention to them. These, this was only a dollar in store and I sold it for $24.50. Um, and I knew it based on the comps that there'd be a good sell through rate on it as well. So that was great. This one came out of our vintage America hat pickup, Courtney. Yeah, I um, remember. With the game day NFL tag, Green Bay Packers. Very old school vintage hat too, because it's got the old Walmart tag on there. Um, so a really cool hat that we sold for $28, I think. Mm. Now, I think we could have got a few more than 28 I think we could have about 35 maybe $40. Mm. Um, we do have another... We I have think a few? We've got a lot. And we've got a lot of Green Bay too, which yeah. is why I took the best offer at 28 because there's so many more vintage Green Bay hats up there. Yeah. Um, regardless though, we, we, we are 
probably going to get into their hats, I think, this week from a culling perspective. So to see 24 of them... Oh, sorry. To see four of them sell, I'm not too disappointed. Anyway, the reason why I'm saying it is that sell your hats because they do sell quite well. Um, so there you go. We'll put them all into a box today. Uh, we had a piece of clothing, two pieces of clothing, and I thought I'd mention as well. This one's a triple XL Tommy Bahama. Now, I think it's either linen or silk. Silk. Silk, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a silk one. Um, so, look, a great brand, 100% silk. It's a big shirt, too. I think this one went for about 30 to $35. Mm. Um, we've got a fair few of these. We bought these in a thrift store for $10. And even though we don't do much clothing, we will pick up Tommy Bahama if it's linen or if it's silk. Um, so that's a really cool sale that'll go into a small satchel for $8.50. This is a big one though, Courtney. Guess how much this sold for? Limp Biscuit, vintage Limp Biscuit tea. What do you reckon? Was it like a hundred? It was a hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Hundred bucks. What a what a cool tea. Uh, single stitch as well. This would have been early two thousands, maybe late nineties. Um, there are a couple of holes on it as you can see there. Um, so it is definitely quite old. Uh, for anyone that's new to clothing selling, if you're unsure what single stitch refers to, that's what we mean by single stitch. So there it is there. Um, and that just tells you that it can be a vintage a vintage item. So old school, Limp biscuit, an incredible find. This old ratty t-shirt sold for 100 bucks. How cool is that? Yeah. Um, right, hats and clothing. We've got some books here as well. Now, Courtney and I, when did we find this? Last week, wasn't it? Yeah. The four hour work. That's good. Brilliant. The four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Now, I really wanted to read this book because it's a fantastic read, so I've heard. You haven't read that one yet, have you? No. Um, but it sold in the space of about three or four days for $23.50, I think, in the end. Um, so I might have to get a second copy of that and give that one a read. Mm. The other one as well, this sold for $29.99. This is just a, a very like like new copy of Goosebumps books that were actually, these are the old school vintage books. But they're vintage books, but they're like new. Um, so we've got Welcome to Dead House, The Haunted Mask, Say Cheese and Die, and One Day at Horrorland. Like new vintage Goosebumps. You can sell them in ratty condition um, and they can still go for great money in bundles. So... Uh, we are selling quite a number of books at a pretty fast rate as well. And I think that's all thanks to you, Courtney. Yeah. Because you've got a pretty good eye. You've got yeah. a good eye for the books whenever we're out thrifting. Um, now, some DVDs. I've got this bundle of DVDs to talk about here because it's in large part thanks to Courtney because she's been very, very hard on reducing price points. We've got Salem Season 1 to 3 here. We've got a $25 sale price on that one there. That goes into a small satchel. There was a price drop on Absolutely Fabulous. Uh, on DVD, I think that sold for like $18. Mm -hmm. um, we've got this one that goes into a small satchel, Ken Follett. It was one that's been sitting upstairs in the top shelf for months, if not years. Mm. Uh, I think that went for $19.95 in the end. We would have probably priced that up for like $30. Mm. We dropped it to $19.95 and then the sale comes through. Um, so considering how many DVDs we have, I'm fine with that. And then this was a partial set that got reduced in price too. It was season one and then three, four and five. So not a complete set. We're, we're missing season two, uh, but I think that was a $25 sale price on that one there too. So don't be afraid to list up your part bundles. But a reason why I've gone through all of that with you is because that wasn't the original price points a week or two ago. It was all thanks to the cull uh, that brought in those sales. Mm. Um, just the one pair of shoes that we've sold over the weekend. I think this is a category, just like the hats that we might be focusing on this week as well, is getting into all of these shoe tubs and really critiquing every single listing and trying to drop as many price points as possible to get a few more sales because just one pair of shoes selling when we've got so many available uh, tells me that we should be uh, potentially dropping the price on a few more. Uh, but these Clifton 6s, I'll put the comps up on the screen. It was a good price. can't remember exactly how much, but it was a high price. Um, Hokers, you're always going to get a good sell-through rate when you, uh, when you find a pair of Hokers at the right price. Uh, and then this was a big one. We've got a massive bunch of Skylanders here, and we've got a couple of games, a couple of Skylander games on the Wii, and there's a couple of those base plates um, buried in there. I won't pull it out, but you can see the base plate just there. Um, so this was a random allocation of old school Skylander figurines, and I bought this in a massive Facebook Marketplace purchase. I, th I think I paid about $200, and I sold all of the individual games off. There was, you know, your Wii Sports Resort, um, there was, a, I think, a Mario Kart in there as well, which we got about $70 or $80 for. 
And then we sold a console as well. All these Skylanders we just thought we'd do as a bundle and we sold this whole box for $120. And Courtney and I are gonna ship it off literally as it is with just a little bit, a bit of butcher's paper on top. And then we're gonna fold that up and just ship it off as it is. So let us know if that's a, I reckon that's a rough way of doing it. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Cause it's a really tough box as well, but there's no movement and then the bubble wrap on top. I yeah. mean, whatever it is, butcher's paper. Yeah, stuff the butcher's paper in there. Yeah. Uh, just on top and that really firms it out. Mm. It just feels weird to not yeah. bubble wrap on, yeah. the, on the inside. Yeah. But I think that's what we'll do. Yeah. Um, let us know in the comments if you think that's a shitty way of going about it. Um, I think it might be a good way. So, what's that? That's six different talking points around six different items there. Hats, clothes, books, DVDs. It's what we sell. Um, and then over in the corner here, we've got a collection laid out of untracked sales in DVDs and video games. And then we've got some tracked envelopes of DVDs and video games there as well. Uh, some books, a Funko, had this one sell for like $18, this is like a Homer Simpson egg holder, quite a weird item, but bought in a bundled lot back in January, took a year to sell. Uh, and then this one came through as well, Columbo, um, a price drop that Courtney uh, did on Friday, and then we got a Sunday sale. Mm. No, you got uh, it on Friday, you sent it to me on Sunday, didn't you? I sent Friday. You, yeah, I, it might, no, well, this one sold very recently, but I think there was uh, another one somewhere oh, in the mix. Was. I think I shipped it out on Friday. Yeah. I sent Courtney a photo and I'm like, look at this, you literally dropped the price an hour ago and it's just come through and Go sold. Um, but this was another one. Yeah. 30, 37.95. Mm. And I think we were trying to sell it for 50. Mm. So, look, I'm happy to take 37.95 because we would have only paid at most $10. Yeah. Great, great return. Better than sitting up in the cupboard anyway. Yeah. Um, so there you go. This is what Corny is putting into the mailbag this Monday morning. Now, it's the last, second last Monday before the Christmas period for us. Um, so the 18th of December is next week. And uh, pretty much everything that goes on to sell throughout this week is going to be in time for Christmas. And then after that, it's going to quieten right off uh, because it won't be received for Christmas. So we're really going to put our head down before we go to Christmas party. Yeah. Christmas do. party next Wednesday. If anyone knows Dracula's on the Gold Coast, Courtney and I are there uh, next Wednesday night for a Christmas party and we're going to have a few drinks before it as well. Bit different to last year. Very different to last year, but we're going to take the iconic photo. <laughs> you know that photo? Yeah. We're gonna, You and I are going to sit out there and we'll put it on Instagram. Yeah. And we'll do a comparison off last year. Bef yeah, yeah. Before and after. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so this week we're going to work really, really hard and then we're going to know that things are going to peter off a little bit pretty much until January 15. We're going to have about a quiet month period. And um, we're kind of getting started with that quiet month by starting the cull and the price drop and then the, the skewing as well. Um, so there you go, Courtney. You can, mm. you can jump into the post. If you're a brand new seller on eBay and you're unsure about what items to buy, I would 100% recommend that you watch this video right here. It's got a lot of great items that I was able to source from a thrift store a few weeks back and they've all gone on to sell for some great money. So appreciate you being here for this one. We'll see you over there.